How do you get a record deal? Where do you turn to when you're struggling financially, physically, and mentally? And who throws the best Christmas party in Toronto? These are all things we're gonna answer here on Cooking Backstage, where we cook with a special guest from the music industry. My name continues to be Mark Watson, and our guest today is Catherine Hummel. Catherine has her own management company called Hummel Entertainment. She is also the director of A&R at Royalty Records, and she does some work with the Unison Benel... Unison Benel... Oh. She works with the Unison Benevolent Fund. Now, we have some really big news here on Cooking Backstage. We have our very first sponsor. <laughs> Thank you to Joe Daly and his team over at High Performance Management Solutions. We really appreciate the sponsorship and the support in these early days. Thank you. Now, I know what you're asking yourself. How can I help Mark in Cooking Backstage? Now, I'm not going to ask you for money. I'm not going to get you to sell anything. All I want you to do are three things. Click the like button, subscribe, and hit that bell button. And that's it. All right, let's do this. We're here with Catherine Hummel on Cooking Backstage, and I'm very excited because we're cooking our very first gluten-free, dairy-free, vegan dish, correct? All right. So I've got a face for a podcast, so I'm going to get behind the camera and leave it all up to Catherine. And uh, you ready to do this? Let's do it. All right, here we go. We've got some cilantro, zucchini, green onions, carrots, limes, bean sprouts, cauliflower, cabbage, ginger, and we're, for our sauce, we're going to include almond butter, tahini, some avocado oil, garlic, as well as some uh, coconut nectar and coconut sugar. All right, so we're going to start with our noodles, which are made out of carrots and zucchini, and we've got them on our spiraler here. Yeah, so I thought I would just go with something a little on the lighter side. Um, it's a lot easier to modify a dish when it's vegetable-based because I haven't come across anyone that's very much allergic to any kind of vegetables, and it's just easier on the digestion and a good way to get in those extra veggies in the day. Just going to put some salt on them and set them aside and work on the rest of the dish. So what are we putting in the sauce? So we have ginger in so far and we're going to add a little bit of uh, garlic there. And we're going to also add a quarter cup of tahini here. Tahini is sesame seed oil. That it is. And then we're also going to add half a cup of almond butter. All right, we're just going to add some lime here, roughly about two tablespoons. And we're going to add some coconut nectar, or otherwise known as coconut aminos. This is a good replacement for soy sauce. Um, oh, is it salty? Yes, it is. Oh. The processed nature of soy, uh, for those that don't know, soy beans are actually one of the most highly processed and um, sprayed crop. Uh, and genetically modified so I typically try to stay away from soy in my diet um, and so coconut nectar is a really great uh, substitute for that and then also um, for those that don't know uh, soy sauce typically has wheat in it as well so it is generally not gluten free oh. yeah, and so we're also going to add some coconut uh, crystals here so roughly about three tablespoons so this is where the, the sugar and the salty and sweet are all going to combine. It's a little thick right now, but it will loosen up when we start cooking it. All right, what's next? Just going to shred up some cabbage here and prepare the rest of our vegetables so we can saute or toss them in the sauce we just made and then we're going to saute them. So uh, what was your career path? Long story short, I basically got my start in high school where I... Um, you know, was helping out doing different street teaming and getting, you know, feel for promotions and helping out with different events and photography and stuff back then. Um, yeah, was that in high school? Or that college? was in high school, yeah. yeah. And then into college, um, I was promoting a lot of events downtown Toronto, was doing about two weekly events a week, and then uh, started my own uh, monthly series, which was done at a place called Club 329 on Queen Street East. Yeah, I remember it. Yeah, um, and then from that I did marketing promotion for that for a little while. And then um, I've always had my hand in developing artists and just helping, you know, get their UBKs going and things like that. And so I had a hand playing with uh, Down With Webster and Hail the Villain, helping get them signed. From there, yeah, started my own company. 
um, alongside working for Canadian Music Week where it was an opportunity to really uh, grow my network and my experience there while I was developing my arts on the side which one of the first acts that I had signed at that time was the Red Light Riot. Guitar player Donna Grantis went on to play with Prince as well as the bass player Dave went on to play with Thornley. And from there, yeah, I got a taste for artist management and it was kind of history from there. <laughs> as I was managing the Red Light Riot, um, I also started to work for Factor, learning the grant system and just getting a feel for understanding what it's like on the receiving end really helped give me a lot of experience that then um, when I left Factor, I went on to manage uh, Hey Romeo, a multiple award-winning country uh, group that we were lucky that we were able to travel the world together, did some major tours together, and as a result also raised a lot of funding for them um, because of some of that previous experience. So who are you managing currently? So right now I have uh, Chris Buck, uh, Josh David, and Chris Assad, um, who's actually been one of my clients since the beginning. We've been working together for 15 years and then I have uh, three clients that I do marketing services for. Uh, so I have Olivia Penelva, Richard, and Rain. So your other hat that you wear is uh, you are the director of A&R for Royalty Records. Um, mm -hmm. Tell us your role there and what you've been doing. My role there has morphed a little bit over the years, but uh, specifically right now I do most of the day-to-day -day and oversee the label's roster and uh, do all the marketing um, for our label. And so the question on everyone's mind, uh, how do I get a record deal with Royalty <laughs> Records? Well, I mean, I think it's kind of another rule of thumb is, you know, just be active, be out there, be noticeable, like, you know, learning your own business, um, making sure you're doing the things that you should be to attract audiences. And I am a firm believer of the saying, of, if you build it, they will come. Um, and I think if you, you know, are building a buzz, like I, you know, I spend a lot of my time or with my team, you know, scouring the internet, scouring, like, making sure that we're up to date with who's doing what, like, you know, before, uh, you know, COVID, I was definitely going out more or going to different events, making sure I was popping into different showcases, um, you know, there's a various ways, but predominantly, like, if you are creating good music and you're creating good content that's reaching people, you know, eventually it's going to make its way to people like myself um, because that's part of our job. My job as an a and is to be out there scouting and finding new talent. So I don't, I don't know if you know this, but uh, I wrote a country hit about 28 years ago. Uh, it's a hit in my own mind. I haven't released it yet. <laughs> I was going to say, but, I'm like, that's news to me. <laughs> but today might be your lucky day. Not only do you get to come cook, but I might present you with Oh, you're going to play me something. Yeah, I, think <laughs> I might. Okay, so next... Got our noodles. We're going to add this to the end of our dish and just lightly saute it for a few minutes um, until they're a little softer and then uh, we're going to garnish it and we're done. Can you talk a bit about uh, Unison and mm -hmm. uh, what they do, how artists can access that, anyone in the industry yeah. can access it, correct? Yeah, so Unison Benevolent Fund um, is an organization that was purposely set up for our industry as a safety net. Traditionally, for anyone that you know may need any kind of counseling, um, whether it's mental health related or finance related, um, that we provide those free services as well as financial assistance. So for a lot of people, um, you know, they don't realize that it's accessible for both musicians as well as anyone working in the industry. So from the live side to management to PR. Uh, and so that's a free membership. Really easy to sign up online at unisonfund.ca. Um, and then now as a result of COVID, we also have a relief fund that was set up outside of our regular financial assistance program. Um, the financial assistance program that's run all year round is for anyone that you know comes across any kind of hardships whether it be um, you know surgery or some some form of, of interruption into your ability to work um, that we're able to be there during those times and then specifically uh, for the relief fund um, there is a thousand dollar grants up to four times you can access free membership takes under five minutes and then uh, access the application page and uh, somebody at, at Unison will get back to you right away and are there for any questions you might have. And you guys throw one of the best Christmas parties. 
Okay, let's plate it up. And do a little green onion and some cilantro on top there. Got a little mixture here. And some crushed up cashews. There you go. Got gluten free, dairy free pad thai. <laughs> Now, we have some really big... Guys, too soon, too soon, Alex.